for today. Just thank God for your life. Yeah. 
Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. Choir, thank you. God bless you. I want us to appreciate God this morning. Before we do that, I want to read Bible. Let us open our Bible to Psalm 96, verse 1. Let us read it together. Psalm 96, verse 1. Ninety-six. 
verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the heart. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare the glory among the nations, his, wonder, his wonders among all peoples. In this, I want us to open our mouth this morning and begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate him. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Proclaim his good news. Declare his holy name. Tell him, give him all the glory this morning. For the grace and opportunity he has granted unto you to be here this morning. Appreciate him, exalt his holy name because he's a faithful God. Give him all the glory because he's a way maker. He's a miracle working God. Give him all the glory for turning your situation around. For giving you joy. For giving you grace. For giving a new song unto you. Begin to appreciate him this morning. Exalt his holy name. Thank him for his protection, for his provision, for wonders and miracles he has been doing in your life, in your family. Begin to appreciate him. He's a faithful God. He's so faithful. He's so faithful to fill. Appreciate him this morning. Sing a new song unto him. Bless his holy name. There is no other God. There is no, no, no one like him. Begin to appreciate him. Thank you, Father, that we appreciate you this morning. That they will join our voices together as a church this morning. And we are saying thank you, thank you, Daddy, for preservation of our soul. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity given unto us to be here this morning. That is not by power, it's not by might, it's just by your spirit, says the Lord. That, Daddy, that is why we are saying thank you, Lord, for counting us worthy this morning. Thank you, Daddy, because we are not in the mortuary, we are in the sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Daddy, because we are not in the sick ball. We are here and healthy this morning. Daddy, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you on behalf of every one of us in this sanctuary this morning. We are saying thank you. We ascribe all glory back unto you. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. Thank you for giving us good health. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you for fighting our battle for us. Thank you for giving us strength in this season. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For increasing our faith in this time around. That they will say, Blessed be your name, O Lord. We turn our glory back unto you on behalf of our, our children, on behalf of our family, our husbands, our wives. We say thank you this morning for everything we've been doing in our lives in this church. We say thank you. Father, we cannot thank you enough. You have been so good unto us. You have shown us so much mercy, much more than we deserve. That is why we are saying thank you this morning as a church. Blessed be your name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. We're going to pray this morning. If you are in the church this morning, and you are still believe that my God still answer prayers, I want you to wave your hand to the Lord and say, I believe. I believe. So we are going to join our faith together this morning, and we are going to pray. And I pray that God will answer us in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we pray, I want us to open our Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. I want everybody to, we want us to read it together. Let us say what the Bible says. Let us read so that we pray that we understand it this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people who are called by my name, we humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness ways, wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I heal their land. Who believe this? I believe. So this morning, I want us to join our voice together as a church on behalf of every one of us, the world, the whole world, and say, Father, show us mercy this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we have come to the throne of mercy this morning. Show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray, show us mercy. We are ready to turn away from every wicked ways. Please show us mercy this morning in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we are praying, oh Lord, this morning, show us mercy. Show your church mercy. Show the whole world mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we repent, we repent for all our ways. Father, all evil ways, show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we sh show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mercy this morning triumph over judgment, over my family, over our church, over every one of us in this sanctuary, over the whole world, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are confessing every sin this morning. Daddy, we say, Father, every committed sin, Every known one, the unknown sin this morning, Daddy, show us mercy. We approach you this morning through this throne of mercy. Daddy, show us mercy. Show us mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your blood, that, that precious blood that shed on the blood of Calvary, 
begin to speak mercy on behalf of every us around this morning. Let that blood, that precious blood that you shed on the blood of Calvary, begin to speak mercy for the whole world this morning. That we are, we are praying this morning, we are pleading, Father, have mercy. In the name of Jesus, show us mercy. Show the whole world mercy this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask, we're asking for mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking mercy for those that have not known you throughout the world. That your mercy will bring salvation to them this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, show us mercy. Let your mercies begin to speak for us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We all know that as a church, this season is our, is our season of our new song. And someone might be saying, ah, in, this, in, the, in this midst of corona, coronavirus crisis, we are saying we are in the midst of new song. Yes, we will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that the whole world will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we pray this morning, I want us to read again what the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 14. It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So we are going to stand on this word, on this promise this morning. John 14, 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I believe as we stand on this word this morning, as we pray, God will answer us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to open our Bible to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Isaiah 54, verse 1. I will read. It's most of our time. I read quickly from here. Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You, have, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. And again, I want to read for, from the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 to 20. I will quickly read. I will take my prayer point from, from this two passage. The Bible says, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Verse 15 says, The Lord has taken away your judgment. He has cast out your enemy, the king of Israel. The Lord is in your, in your midst. You shall, see the, you shall see the sasa no more. Let somebody say amen to this. We will see the sasa no more in the name of Jesus. Verse 16 says, In the day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Zion, let your hand be, not be weak. Verse 17 says, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over, your, over you with gladness. He will quiet you, he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Verse 18 says, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you, to whom it is reproach is a body. Verse 19 says, Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the name and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame. That's what God will appoint us for fame and praise in the name of Jesus. God will remove every shame in the name of Jesus. In every land where they were put to shame, at that time I will bring you back. Even at the time I gather you, for I will give you fame and praise. That will be our portion in Jesus' name. Among all the peoples of the earth, will I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of God for us this morning. We can go home and meditate on it. But my prayer point, I want to take my prayer point from this passage this morning as we pray. My first prayer point says, in that, uh, the first one we read, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 says, we should sing. We said, this, we should sing. Not only those that have no child should sing, but barren, uh, barren is when you lack something you're supposed to have. That's what barren means. Not only people that do not have child. So someone can be barren physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. And if someone is barren, you will not be able to sing. I pray that will not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So song of joy comes naturally when there is supernatural touch. When God turns sorrow to joy, that's when somebody will sing a new song. So my first prayer point this morning says, Father, I'll put every seed of barrenness in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me begin to pray. It says, Father, I'll put every seed of barrenness from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll put everything called barrenness in the name of Jesus. Spiritual barrenness. Maybe you have been Christian for so long, for many years, but no convert, no fruitfulness. Pray this morning that God should not put every fruit of spiritual violence from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
help that is making you to remain a baby Christian, that God should uphold it in the name of Jesus. Every seed of baroness, which are Father, uphold it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Baroness can be sickness, can be pain, can be sorrow, can be failure. Father, I pray this morning, whatever that baroness means in your life, in my life this morning, Father, I'll put every seed of baroness in the name of Jesus. Let them be put by your mighty hand in the name of Jesus. Father, please, by your mercy this morning, I'll put everything that is causing baroness in our lives, in our home, in our church, in our nation, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let begin to experience abundance in every area, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove every foot of baroness from our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. My second prayer point says, Father, Replace shame with your glory in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that anything that represents shame in our life, that God should replace his glory in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, replace everything that rep represents shame in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever that represents shame in our family, in our home, we re replace it with shame in the mighty name of Jesus in every area of our life. Let's begin to explain glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your glory swallow every shame in our lives, in our midst, in the name of Jesus. Let your glory swallow every form of shame in every area of our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, replace shame with glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. In my life, in the life of every member of Grace Sanctuary, in the name of Jesus, let, let glory swallow every form of shame in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The third prayer point I want to take from that prayer is, Father, I receive strength from above in Jesus' mighty name. That would be good to say, Father, I receive strength from above in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive strength from above from any spiritual weakness in the name of Jesus. I receive strength from above for any physical weakness in the name of Jesus. I receive strength from above for my family in the name of Jesus. I receive strength from above for this church in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we receive strength from above in the mighty name of Jesus. Strength to do as much for you in the name of Jesus. Strength to tell others about Jesus. We receive this this morning. Money, in the name of Jesus, we receive strength to succeed in every area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we receive strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, everything we lay on shall be continue to prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we, re we refuse to be weary. We refuse to be give to, to, to give up. In the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse to be discouraged. In the name of Jesus, we receive strength as a church this morning. Strength to carry us through. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, strength from above this morning. So shall be our portion. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In that seven chapter 3, verse 15, it says, It will remove disaster. What is disaster? It's a sudden event, like accident, like everything, like coronavirus. Let's pray this morning that I paralyze any plan of enemy that wants to cause any form of disaster in my life. Either now or in the future. I will stand against them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that, Father, anything, whatever, any plans of enemy, I paralyze them. That I want to cause any form of disaster in my life. And that now in the future, I paralyze the activities of the enemy in my life. It will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to say, Father, please by your mercy, Put an end to coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. We're going to pray like a Daniel day today. That Father, the Daniel said, even if God did not save him, he's not going to, to he's continue to serve God. So we are praying this one. Either God will answer or not. We are still going to serve God. Let's begin to say, Father, today. Father, put an end to any form of coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus. Throughout the whole world. Put our hand to it in the name of Jesus. Father, we put our hand to this deadly disease in the name of Jesus. Father, we say, heal those that are affected by your mighty hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heal them all of in Jesus. For your name's sake, oh Lord, for your glory to be revealed in the life of everyone. Let the whole world know through this situation that you are God. Bring soul to yourself through this situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal those people that are sick in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal those people that are sick in the mighty name of Jesus and put our hand to this deadly disease 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, put an end to this pandemic disease. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put an end to death, sudden death now in the, throughout the whole world. In the name of Jesus. Father, through this deadly disease, oh Lord, let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Father, let this crisis, oh God, bring soul to your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've answered our prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Because, our, because of our prayer, our, our time, that, I want us to pray that as the word of God will come this morning, that God will come and minister unto us afresh, that God will do wonders in our lives in the name of Jesus. I begin to pray. Father, as your word will come this morning, let your word come and do wonders in my life in the name of Jesus. Touch me, oh Lord. Let your word touch my life this morning in Jesus' name. Let your word do mighty and greater things in my life in our life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everlasting Father, kings of glory, we thank you for this morning. We appreciate you because you are a father that answers by fire. We give all the glory. We give all the honor. Blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. How do we cover all the prayer points that we have offered to you today? That, that we say that we speedily answer to all the prayer points in the name of Jesus. We join our voices together. We join our faith together as a church. We decree and we declare that you put our hand to coronavirus in our, in the, throughout the world in the name of Jesus. We pray that there will be peace in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cover every one of us with the blood of Jesus. So your blood will flow through our veins in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord of all, we contact this deadly disease in the name of Jesus. So that your glory of God shall be revealed upon our lives, O oh Lord. As we continue, continue with us in Jesus' name. Let your word speak unto us this morning. Let your word touch us in the name of Jesus. Let your word do wonders in our lives today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've answered our prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, before we sing, I would just like to read from the book of <coughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it, seraphim, each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. Um, we're just going to be singing a song that the Lord ministered to me or made me write last year in um, September. It's called High and Lifted Up. As you listen, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Choir, God bless you. You can go back to yours. Amen. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. As a result of what is going on all over the world, I need to address the church this morning. Praise the Lord. Just to bring to your notice about the issue of coronavirus. Coronavirus, also known as the COVID-19, is increasing rapidly around the world, as well as in Canada. But to God be the glory, in Saskatchewan, you know, it is, Saskatchewan is still regarded as a low-risk zone, and it will remain so in the mighty name of Jesus. We are all concerned about your safety and that of your family. We remain vigilant when it comes to the health and safety of our members, even as well as non-members. While the media has been quick to provide real-time updates on the spread of this virus, we highly recommend that you consult trusted and respected health sources when researching on coronavirus. What do you need to know? You need to know that the novel coronavirus, which causes the disease COVID-19, has been classified as a pandemic by the World Health Organization after it spread worldwide, with major hotspots in China, Iran, and Italy. Coronavirus are a large family of viruses, some that cause illness in people, and others that cause illness in animals. Coronaviruses include the seasonal flu and common cold. The new coronavirus can be spread from person to person. It is diagnosed with a laboratory test. Prevention involves frequent hand washing, covering into the hands of your, into the bend of your elbow, and staying home when you are sick. What are the symptoms? The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness, and dry cough. Some patients may have ashes and pains, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, or diarrhea. People with fever, cough, and difficulty breathing should seek medical attention. Praise the Lord. As a church, we'll be taking all necessary precautions to ensure a safe environment for worship. And I need to let you know this as a church that this is our stand. We choose not to be afraid or live in fear. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, please project it, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, let's read it together. He says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Amen. Take note, our stand as a church is that we choose not to live in fear or to be afraid. Two, please do not come to church if you are having cold symptoms, like coughing, sneezing, fever, body pain, shortness of breath, and so on and so forth. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, please take note. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, call 811. In Saskatoon, you call 811. That's the number you are going to call. Amen. Or let me quickly put it this way, that uh, if anybody is having these symptoms, you are not supposed to go to hospital. Don't go to emergency. Don't go to your family doctor. Amen. You call 811 and they will give you all the necessary information. Although that line is, you know, the waiting time on that line is, I learned is more than one hour now. If you call, you keep waiting and waiting and waiting before they can attend to you. Praise the Lord. So if your children or spouse is sick, we ask that you stay home as well and join 
our online services here. Amen. Unless we are told, unless information is passed to us, our church services remains the same. We continue with our church services. Amen. And um, we intend to have everyone entering the building to sanitize or disinfect their hands upon entry. That is why this morning you take note, you see that, you know, we have a disinfector there to disinfect our hands as hand sanitizer is <laughs> no more in the city. Praise the Lord. Amen. But let me just tell you something. I tell you there is nothing to fear about. This virus is a weak virus. Ordinary washing of hands wash away the virus. Amen. Please take note, church. There will be no joining of hands for now. Amen. So when we want to greet ourselves, we just greet ourselves, hi, you know, like that. Amen. For now. No joining of hands. So after the, after the you know, during our greetings, we just greet ourselves. No, no shaking of hands. And then after, when we want to sing our uh, family song, we are not going to join hands together. Amen. We will educate everyone on the need for vaccines if and when available. Amen. And uh, we will increase the frequency and intensity of cleaning touchable services. And uh, please, those of us that have children, you know, our children, we have to sanitize their hands more often when they get to church, during and after service. Uh, parents who are uncomfortable with releasing their children, you know, even to go to the children's church, you know, it's, it's allowed. You know, we are not to force anybody. Amen. Like I said, greeters will not shake hands or give hugs for now. We will continue to lift you up in prayer. Praise the Lord. And uh, in conclusion, I'm going to read to us Psalm 91. Open your Bible to the book of Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and other his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the harrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence. In fact, let this let's put nor for the coronavirus. Praise the Lord. That walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction of coronavirus that wasted at no day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but he shall not come near thee. I want you to say this. Coronavirus will not come near me. Coronavirus will not come near my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Only thy high shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the most high, the habitation. There shall no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. May God hide us permanently in a secret place in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you have any question about coronavirus, feel free to ask, and we are going to keep you posted on the church WhatsApp page if there is any information that you need to know. Amen. God bless you. Please let's close our eyes as we pray. As we, you know, welcome the man of God that is going to minister the word this morning. Let's close our eyes. We begin to meditate on the, upon the word of God.
Praise the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet. We're going to sing a little bit unto the Lord and we go into what God has for us this morning. My beloved is the most beautiful among
sent our love with us.
the glory. We give you all the honor. Worship, worship, worship. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship. No one like you, oh worship. Oh, Just Jesus, worship. You are God. Just worship, church, Jesus, worship. Jesus, Just Jesus, worship. Jesus. Just worship. Oh, Just worship him. Oh, Just worship him. Oh, oh, oh. Say, Jesus. Worship God. Jesus, we worship God. Worship God. Jesus, Jesus. Worship God. Worship. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship. Just worship Him. Just worship Him. Just worship. Just worship. in our midst. The spirit of the living God is in our midst.
there is a reason for a Buona Court to be here this morning. I know that the Holy Spirit has brought us here for a reason. And I can testify to that. Yeah, the worship we just had. It was never planned for. But one thing I know is this. When the Spirit of the Lord wants to take over, He takes over. And there's nothing you can do about it. He takes over. Sorry that I've spent most of my time already. But I would still like to pass the message across. I would still like to pass the message across to everyone. And I know this is coming for a reason in this season. May I never speak what the Holy Spirit doesn't say this morning. May it never come out of my mouth this morning. May I never speak of my understanding this morning. I will deliver this counsel unto his people this morning. You see a grown up man weeping. It's not ordinary. When you see tears in the eyes of someone, it's not ordinary. May we do that which I've been told to do this morning in the name of Jesus. Apologize to the pastor, please. You will give me some time, sir. You give me extra time. Because I will never be at peace if I don't say this out. The burden that has been there for months. And I thank God that God has provided a platform to say this unto every one of us. Yes, it is happening. Yes, you know. And there's a message. There's a message for the body of Christ. I will try and go with what I have written down here, but sometimes I might jump off the track. But trust the Holy Spirit to help. Please, I want to appeal to every one of us. Don't see me this morning. See God that is on this altar. Please don't look at me as this is Broly Cardi Vero. No. Look at God this morning and look at Jesus. Don't look at me because maybe you know me and you are close to me. Forget about that this morning. Look at God and look at Jesus. Yield yourself unto him this morning. The Holy Spirit is here. But you need to yield yourself unto him to receive that which he has sent for unto us this morning. Please, I beg, every one of us, let's break down that wall that is in our heart so that we can receive. I know worship breaks down walls, and that was why the Holy Spirit led us for those few minutes. And I believe our walls have been broken down already. It's time to receive. It's time to receive. Let's have our tea, please. There's a message. to find a way to put a topic on it or to title it. Let me only title it as a gift to it. It's just the power of the mind. The power of the mind. The power of the mind. A lot of battles that we are fighting is the battle of the mind. A lot of battles that believers are fighting is the battle of the mind. I 
we try and break this down to us and we we'll see how far we can go with the help of the Holy Spirit. Man is a trapper type being. Man is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the body. The soul also sometimes we call it the mind. The mind sometimes we call it the heart. This is what man is made up of. When God created the heavens and the earth, and you create and he created man to be in charge of the earth. He had to form man out of the dust of the earth. So that man can be able to relate with the earth that he created. Because heaven and earth were created by God. Earth is the extension of heaven. That's why he said that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. For God's will to be done on earth, he had to create man from the dust and put that spirit inside of him so that man can reign on the earth. Spirits don't die. No. Spirits don't die. But the body dies. A man is useless when you see his lifeless body lying down there on the ground. The real man is gone, which is the spirit. This body we are looking at is just the avenue in which the spirit can relate with the earth so that we can touch things, so that we can take care of what God has created, what we are spirit. the spirit communicates to the body. It is the spirit that tells the body what to do. The body is not meant, it's not supposed to have right over the spirit. But the channel in which the spirit communicates to the body is through the mind. The spirit speaks to the mind. The body takes that information from the mind and acts it out. That is the system that God has created. The Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit man. The spirit man takes it to your mind. The body receives it from the mind and carries it out. Everything the body does is from the mind. Everything the mouth speaks is from the mind. Every reaction and response of the body is from the mind. That's why he said in Romans 12, verse 2, that you should be transformed. We should be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Now, the devil understands this system as well. He knows that the spirit talks to the mind. The body takes information from the mind and acts it out. So the devil finds a way to corrupt that channel of communication. That is what the devil is after. The information is what the devil is after. The Bible said it in John, John, John 10, 10. So the thief coming not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. If someone is coming to kill, that means there is something existing that the person wants to kill. You cannot just say, I want to kill a bird. And there's no bird outside there. A sniper that is aiming at something, you tell you that I'm having a target. That means something is existing that is aiming at. It comes to destroy. You can't say, I want to destroy a building when there's no building. Construction guys cannot say, we want to excavate the ground if there's no ground. That means something is existing. 
A thief cannot say, I want to steal, if there is no, nothing to steal. The devil cannot create, does not create, it really corrupts. The devil, I repeat, cannot create, will not create, we only corrupt. That is that mission in John 10. Your mindset is your philosophy and your conviction about something. I can tell of a man's mindset when I see what it does. I can tell of a man's mindset when I see what is when I hear what he says. Because you can never be greater than your mindset. Because it is from that mind the body takes information and acts upon it. The mindset. The pride of a Christian is in the knowledge of God. If I tell you I'm a Christian and I have no clue about God, I'm an hypocrite. A liar. We take pride in our knowledge of God. We take pride in the things of the kingdom. What is in the kingdom of God? What do I find in the kingdom of God? I find the nature of God there. I find the values of God there. I find his philosophy there. I find his mode of operation there. That is what I find in the kingdom of God. I find the keys to eternal life there. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 16, 19. Said, I have given you the keys to the kingdom. Please project it so that everybody can see it. We all know that I want us to read. Said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Now, I want to say that it is not good enough to know this book. It's not good enough to know this book. And you don't know the person that wrote this book. And I'm saying the person that wrote this book, I'm not talking about Paul. I'm not talking about Timothy. I'm not talking about the apostles. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit himself that wrote this book. It is not good enough cram everything in this book and you don't know the author. You are only doing poetry. You are only doing poetry. And everything that is in this book is written for us. It's for us. As a guide, as a manual, an instruction on the things of the kingdom of God. remember the story of the ten virgins. He said five were wise, five were foolish, right? He said the five of them had extra oil in their lamp that took them far. The rest didn't have enough oil. Their fire went down. Psalm 119, I believe it's verse, is it 105 or 115? said, thy word it's a lamp. It's a lamp unto my feet. The word of God is what? It's a lamp. For I will tell you that the Holy Spirit is the oil inside that lamp. You can carry a lamp. If you have no oil in it, it will not burn. It can never burn. It is the oil in the lamp that makes the fire in the lamp to burn. Run out of oil, the fire goes down. 
That's why we can't push the Holy Spirit away. Even from when we study this book. He is the oil in this world. He is the oil. There was a man in the Bible, the Enoch. He was coming from, I can't remember where he was coming from. He was studying the book of Isaiah. And the Spirit of the Lord told Philip, said, go over to the side of the road. You will see a man that is looking at the book of Isaiah. He has no understanding of what he's doing. Please, go meet him. Philip got there. And Philip asked him, do you know what you are reading, dear Enoch? He said, no, I don't. Except I find someone to explain it to me. That is the place of the Holy Spirit. That is the place of the Holy Spirit. See, eh? You know, people's response to situations shows their mindset. Yeah. It shows what you have inside of you. Your actions and reactions. The words that come out of your mouth, whatever you do, tells me your mindset. <laughs> when we say we are born again, now I will explain it to us very well. Now, it's the translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, right? But you don't stop there. It doesn't help. There is now the renewal of the mind. A man can give his life to Christ today. If his mind is not transformed, he will continue in that old life. That is why we study the Bible. That is why we come for meetings. That is why we pray. So that our mind can be what? Renewed. That is the process. Your mind has to be transformed to the value system of God, the value system of the kingdom, the laws of the kingdom. Our minds need to be transferred. We can't claim to be born again and our mindset is still foul. No. 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 It's not allowed. It is not allowed. It is not permitted. We can't bear that tie too and we are still in the, on the other side. No. It's not possible. We need to renounce the principles of the old life to follow the new. We need to renounce it. We need to give it up to follow the new mindset that has been given unto us. Let this man be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. He came as an example. God had to come in form of a man to show us how to do it. He tried through prophets. He tried through judges. More or less like it did not work. He had to come himself to show this is how it's done. This is the principle of the kingdom. When you pray, this is how you should pray. When things happen to you this way, this is how you should respond. He himself left his glory, came here. Remember the story of an Egyptian journalist who had a, he had a dual citizenship, a Canadian and an Egyptian. He was arrested in Egypt. I don't know, maybe broadcast uh, the news that he knew, a news that he shouldn't have said. I don't know. So those people arrested him. He was in prison for I don't know how long. And the people said, I think maybe his friends or family said, say, ah, government of Canada, rise up to this man. Now. He's a Canadian citizen. And one day the government of Canada said is this. He said he wants dual citizenship. So as they have right over him, so also the country of Egypt has right over him. You see conflict there. And this man is in the middle. Government of Canada said there is nothing we can do unless this man renounces his Egyptian citizenship. That is when we can stop him. He was there for months. Until he finally renounced that citizenship. And within a week, the government of Canada ordered his release. That 
Egypt, you are holding our cities and letting go. And that was how that man came back to Canada again. Many are still holding dual citizenship. That belong to the kingdom of God. They belong to the kingdom of darkness. And we cry unto God, God, arise in your mercy, come and save me. And God looks at you that, ah, uh-uh. you have dual citizenship now. How will I rise to save you? You have to renounce one. That is why sometimes we cry. We pray, we shout, we scream, and nothing happens. The power of the mind. Do not conform to the standard of this world. Now, I'm bringing this closer to what is happening to us right now. When you say you believe in something, that means you believe that that thing exists. Yes. If I believe in God, as we all do, then that means I know that God exists. That's my understanding. Everybody is a believer. Christians, non-Christians, they are all believers. I'm using believer now as as an English word. Everybody is a believer. It now depends on what you believe in. That's what says the difference. That's what says the difference. Revelation 5.9, please give it to me. Revelation 5.9. I want to point something out to us. I know this is coming for a reason. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us from God, us to God, by thy blood and out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Out of every tribe, he has redeemed us. He has brought us out from our tribe. Please. When someone says, this is where I came from, this is how I speak, it angers me. If you tell me that I am from uh, Ibadan, Ibadan people, this is how we are. We don't tolerate, I don't know if that's true though. We don't tolerate nonsense, we give me for, you give me, I give you back. And you still tell me that you are a Christian, it angers me. Please, what is that Bible passage now saying? That he redeemed you out of every kindred, every tribe and tongue, your mother tongue, and from every people and every nation. That means we are saying the birth of Jesus and his resurrection is not complete. If we are still in this system. And this is one thing that is our mindset. That is what has become the mindset of people. Holy Spirit will help us this morning. I'm going somewhere, but I just want to put this in place. Now, look at the Israelites. They were in the land of Egypt for how long? 430 years. They would have been accustomed to the way of life of the Egyptians. You can't say they will not know the way of life of the Egyptians. Probably they will be doing what they are doing. Even when God said, I will take you out to a land that will be a land that is flowing with milk and honey, the land of Canaan, God had to take them through the wilderness to work on their minds. To erase that notion that they carry. That was why anytime there is problem, they will tell Moses, take us back to the land of Egypt so that we can be eating our onion and cucumber. Mindset. It took God 40 years to remove that thing from their mind. God has a promise for everybody, but our mindset can never take us there. Yes. The promise of God exists, but your mindset will not allow you to get there. It's a battle. 
That is the battlefront. Let's read Psalm 78, verse 41. I want to tell you how your mindset can even limit God to even do anything. Psalm 78, verse 41. 41. Verse 41. Psalm 78. Or if you are there, you can help me read it out. Okay. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the holy ones of Israel. Can you say that? The Israelites limited the only one of Israel. Why? Because of the mindset they were exhibiting in the wilderness. God is not sleeping. God is not slumbering. God is not tired. It's not that he cannot rise. It's not that he cannot even rise even for you. But your mindset has limited him that he will not even rise. Faith is believing. Fear is believing. I will repeat. Faith is believing. Fear is believing. When you have faith, you are believing in something. When you have fear, you are believing in something that this thing can harm me or can hurt me. If I say I'm afraid of a car, that means I believe that car can kill me. When I say I have faith in God, then I'm saying that I know God can save me. These are two dimensions of believing. And we all know our God without faith. Let's say it like that. Without faith. Without faith. It's possible to please God. <laughs> the same way faith comes is the same way fear comes. The same way we have faith, the same way fear comes. Romans 10, 7 says, faith comes by what? And through what? Faith comes by hearing. And by hearing and this, this particular hearing, the word of God. I will tell you that so also fear comes by hearing. And by hearing the word of the devil. Yeah. Everything boils down to information. The information you receive is what determines your mindset. If you are a friend with somebody that whenever you see, you play, you joke around, and you see the person the next day and the person starts frowning at you, what happened to the person overnight? And you greeted the person and the person said, if you greet me, eh, what happened to him overnight? The person received an information. That turned his mindset around. Information is powerful. Information is powerful. And this is what the devil is after. Information. That was an instruction and information that God passed to Adam and Eve in the garden. It was an information. The devil came, acted on that information. It was just a simple twisting. Just twisted the information. Said, did God say actually that you, will, you should not eat it? Did God, do you think you are going to die? There was an information already in place. And the devil corrupted it. And Eve went ahead, listened. Whatever the information you allow into your mind becomes you. And that is what will come your way. It's a law and principle that God has put in place. Whatever you, you allow into your mind, that's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. You don't have to go and cry unto anybody that I want to be like this. Start thinking like that. You will become it. It's as simple. It's a, it's, a, it's a philosophy. I mean, it's a law that is in place already. You don't have to fast and pray. Whatever you think about is whatever you will become and it is what will come out of your mouth. The power of the mind. Hmm. 
see what is happening now as a channel to the mind of everyone. I stand on the authority of the name of Jesus. I'm not speaking out of my own understanding this morning. I've told the Holy Spirit, if you don't want me to see it, shut my mouth. What is happening now, and it has been a burden for the past, since last year, even before this thing started escalating, since last year, I've been sensing something. People in the prayer team will understand. This thing that is happening has a channel or an access into your mind. Sometimes I call it, this is a mind game. But there is something that is very important. Those that know their God, they shall what? They shall do exploit. Those that know their God. If you don't know your God, I'm sorry. There's nothing anybody can do for you. No, seriously. You can't know God riding on my own back. Uh-uh. You can't know God riding on pastor's back. Forget it. Those that know their God personally, they will be strong and they shall do exploit. Now, we've read this Bible. Hmm? We've read this Bible, but my question is, why, why are we not believing in this thing? Is it just a book that we carry? Please, why are we not believing in this thing? Is it, is it just to read? Or why, why we always we have to gather people to write this book? I know why I'm saying this. And I want to wake every one of us up. Please. If you've not known God, go and know God. Enough is enough of, of all these things that, we, that people do. Enough is enough on, of on seriousness about God. You see people sometimes in church, they're on their phone. What is that? Is that your God? Is that how you know your God? Let's take this God serious. Too. Don't let us people, don't let people laugh about this, our God. Too. Seriously. The way we are going, the way people are going, people will question us. Telling you the fact. It's getting there. They will question us. Please. We know what is happening. Yes. Let's do our hygiene. Yes. But this is the time for believers to rise up. What I see in this situation is this. God has proved to man that you are helpless without me. We trusted in science. We trusted in technology. Where are they? Donald Trump made a speech. He said, we have the best uh, scientists in the world. We have this and that, blah, 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 blah. He said everything. Good. We will heal the sick. Yes, you will. I saw something that maybe, you know, it's always on Twitter. Somebody took a snapshot. And I said, I want to declare a national day of prayer. Hey, for somebody to say that, don't you think that this thing is out of hand? Now, people want to go back to God. And if you don't know your God before, and you are trying to find God in this situation, sometimes you try to find him out of fear. Aha. Yes. This is the time that we should be rising up. At your place of work, don't make it a topic for discussion. Stop it. Don't say it. They talk at, about it at my place of work. I sit down in my office. I just mm, ban it. Fear. The Bible says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Say, fear enough, I'm with you. Be not be dismayed. I am your God. Is God lying? 
Is he lying? Why are we afraid? Why is the body of Christ afraid? Why are you personally afraid? It's because you believe that that thing can kill you. That is the answer. It's because you believe it can kill you. They're more or less like saying that, God, everything you wrote here, you only wrote it there to motivate us. There's nothing about it. God is not a liar. God is not a liar. He cannot lie. Please, let's know who we are in Christ. Rise up, believers. This is our time. And I believe it's this. If this virus should come in contact with a believer, it should die. It should die. If you have the blood of Jesus flowing through you, and, you, and the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and virus will come and dwell where I accept you don't have the Holy Spirit in that, in that temple. That's the fact. Please, let's, let's change our mindset. It's outside. Yes, we know. Those that know their God, they shall be strong. We are immune to this thing. Build up your faith. When people say it, don't say it. Because when you confess it, you allow it into your mind. Don't listen to it anymore. You've learned about everything you need to learn about it. Faith comes by hearing and through the hearing of God. Fear comes by hearing and by hearing the word of the devil. Tell the devil enough is enough. The Holy Spirit led our pastor here last, last year, December, to anoint everybody. It's for a reason. Just like the Israelites, they were told to, uh, to, uh, to put out blood upon their doorposts. As the angel of death is passing, it will not come near them. They were in the land of Goshen. Plague was ravaging the land of Egypt. It never came near them. Those are the people of God. We come here, we take communion. Are we just eating uh, wafers? Or we are just drinking uh, orange juice? Faith. Faith can move a mountain. Faith can cure anything. But if we lack it, we become agents. Transmitters of it as well. John G. Lake, one of the powerful men of God, a plague was ravaging his city. People were dying on the road. Nobody to bury them. He said, we will, are we going to leave these people on the road? The government said, nobody dare go near those people. You will get infected. He said, I will do the burying, the burial. He carried everybody, buried them. The scientists said, come. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to kill yourself? He told them that this thing cannot harm me. I know whom I believe. He told them, let's go to your lab. Pull this virus. Take it from the fresh mouth of, and the mouth of a fresh human being that just died. It was like you convulsed. Foam comes out. Put it under your microscope. They put it there. They saw the virus jumping up and down, happy. They like jalivating all over the place. He said, put that thing on the palm of my hand. Put it under your microscope. They did. They put his hands there. They were looking at the virus, dying one by one. This man has no two heads. It's a man like me and you. It's a man like me and you. Don't exercise fear, church. Pastor has told us. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have angels that are keeping watch over you. Say the angels of the Lord and compass the children round about and delivers them. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it inside and is saved. Please, when we are even reading Psalm 91 or Psalm 23, please don't read it in panic. Say, he that dwell under the house of the Lord shall abide under the shadow of his wing almighty. Uh, hey, 45 people now. Ah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hey, it will not work. Oh. Because fear is in place. This is my word for the church. Malachi 3, please, as a hand up. Malachi 3. There's something that came to my understanding when I saw it. I will round up now. But it's for every one of us to understand what you are doing. If you are a believer, know that you are a believer. 
If you are not, please know that you are not. We can't sit on the fence. Malachi 3, I think from verse, verse 14, it says, You have said it is futile to serve God. What did we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evil doers prosper and even those who challenge God escape. Those who fear the Lord talk with each other and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who fear the Lord and honor his name. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty. In the day when I make up my treasured possession, I will spare them. Just as in comparison, a man spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve God and those who do not. From my own understanding, this virus is creating a distinction between those that truly know their God and those that do not. Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord thy God, shall bless thy bread and water, and take away sickness from your midst. It's as simple as that. Please, if you don't know God, and you, and you are just serving him because we come to a church that belongs to you, please stop. Go and find God. Go back to your closet. Go and submit back to him. This situation, only those that endures to the end. When we were praying yesterday, and one of us said, the way we see you is that demon, there is a demon that is just blowing this thing. They say, don't touch your face, don't touch your mouth, don't blah, blah, blah. And it's still spreading, spreading. Lies off. You won't find it in the store anymore. And it's still spreading. So that, that should bring us an understanding that this is not ordinary. This is demonic. This is demonic. It's a small virus, yes. But why is it still spreading? Why is it still killing a lot of people? Those who know their God, though, those who know their God, though, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. My advice to every one of us is this. I will go over it quickly. Pastor, I'm very, very sorry, sir. I will go over it very quickly. Stop listening to the negative news. News, please. Don't let media kill you before your time. You go on Facebook. Hey, this one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Please, are you building faith through that? You are building fear. You will start coughing at, ah, Corona has entered me. <laughs> you that cough normally, you. Your throat will start itching you. Hey, is it not that I'm having this thing? And remember, the key the devil uses to unlock the door of your mind is fear. Open that door, fear enters, everything follows. You that is not sick before, you start thinking that I am sick. We can overcome. We are overcomers. Christ was made a cause for us. He took away everything. The Jesus I know died and resurrected. He was beaten because of this disease. He was chastised because of this disease. He was wounded because of this disease. And by his stripes, by his stripes, that is our confession. Let the devil hear. Eh? Tell the devil, sit down. Let's sit down. Eh? Look at me. You are your virus. You are a failure. The devil is afraid of confidence. What you are afraid of is afraid of you too. It's as simple as that. Stop hearing the bad news. Do more of the word of God. Don't spend your time on media anymore. Go and dig this word. This is where the healing is. This is where the protection is. Get out of unprofitable groups. If you are in a group and what they are talking there is just how this thing is killing people, get out. Get out. Just get out. You have the right to leave. Don't join them in discussing this. Now, the Holy Spirit, listen to him. He is our guide. He is to give us the information from the Lord. Listen to him. The more of him you listen to, the more your faith grows. Don't take things for granted anymore. Holy Spirit is speaking. Through worship, he speaks mightily. 
before I just listen to music, I don't know their lyrics. Now I'm knowing their lyrics. Why? Because those lyrics are powerful. It's not about melody anymore. Hey, that's a very good melody. You are rocking your body. Listen to the lyrics. There's healing in worship. There's healing in worship. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. Remember to put on that hammer. The hammer of God, we all know it. With faith. The shield of faith, what does it do? Which shall quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Please, is, is, is God lying? I'm encouraging us and I'm also challenging us. The prayer I pray over this virus is that God glorify yourself. Let them see that there is a difference between somebody that is serving you and somebody that does not reckon with you. Let there be a, a, a release of reports that Christians are not getting infected. And you think that people will not run to the church? You are at your place of what people are tell, talking about the fear. You to say, hey, this thing eh, is killing it. It's killing people. It's killing people. And the virus now go. And now say you want to witness to the person that God loves you. God can protect. The person will look at you. You? God can protect. And you were running away from Corona. We are witnesses. The evidence is now. He said, I send you out to go and witness. Evidence is what makes people to listen. When you are able to stand your ground and this thing does not push you down, you have something to say, brother. You have something to say. So let's take this as an opportunity that God wants to glorify himself. The glory of God will come out of this thing. The glory of God is coming out of this. That is my belief. Yes, I know people are dying, but God is still going to glorify himself. We cried unto God, God, let there be a revival. Let your power move. This is an avenue. If there's no problem, do you need solution? No. This is an avenue for God to use me and you to show the world that he still exists. People think he's dead, but now he's showing forth that I still exist. Let's rise up on our feet. My message is no more than that. My message is no more than that. Please let's rise up on our feet. You are going to search yourself personally. Search your heart personally. What is your standing with God? What is your standing in God? Are you standing firm or you are shaky? How have you been taking the things of God? Lightly or seriously? It's in your hands. It's in your hands. We are going back now. Everybody is going outside now. Are you still going to start exercising fear? Are you still going to continue to be fearful and start panicking? Are you still going to be doing calculation that within a week, four people got it, in the next two weeks, it will turn to 20? Please, okay, what if it, it comes to you? What will you do? Ask yourself. If you now get infected, what are you going to do? Is that the end of the world? Are you going to kill yourself? <laughs> Pray. Oh. Pray. That God will restore you in his mercy. You have enjoyed enough. This is the time to exercise your faith as a believer. If you say you have faith, this is the time to prove your faith. Except you have fear. And when somebody is afraid, that person cannot praise God. It's as simple as that. Pray. Pray. When you pray, don't pray out of fear. We pray in our homes, yes, but don't pray out of fear. Except you don't trust God anymore. I do trust my God. I know the God I'm serving. Except we don't know him. Pray. want you to touch any part of your body, your head, your chest. Just lay your hands upon your chest. Maybe you are experiencing some sickness. Maybe there is something that you think is not right in your body. Is there any part of your body that you need God's touch this morning? 
You just lay your hands on me with faith. And I want you to decree. I want you to declare. Speak to your body right now. I am healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I am delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I am restored in the mighty name of Jesus. I am restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Sickness is not my portion. Disease is not my portion. I am of God. I'm a child of God. I belong to God. God is my father. Sickness, you have no right inside of me. I am immune to this. I am untouchable in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory for this morning. Thank you for what you've spoken even unto us. I pray, Lord, as we go forth, O oh Lord, we will resist the devil and he will flee from us in the mighty name of Jesus. In your name we go. In your name we move. In your name we will try. In this land, in this situation, in the mighty name of Jesus, glorify yourself, Lord. Glorify yourself, Lord. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. So, Lord, in the attitude of prayer, let's just stretch forth our hands to our brother that the Almighty God has used this morning, that the Lord will continue to uphold and strengthen him, that his strength will not fail him, that the oil upon his life will not dry up, but it will be renewed daily in the name of Jesus, that every virtue that has come forth from him, the Lord restores in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Is that, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, church. All right. Just say to yourself, I shall not fear. I shall not fear. My soul shall be strong in God. Amen. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time today? If this is your first time in the sanctuary, anybody? Anybody? All right, our mommy. Hallelujah. So as Pastor said, we are not going to go around and shake them. We'll just stretch forth our hands to them from wherever we are and uh, bless them. God bless you for coming to church. Uh, we pray that the good God has brought you here will do that which only you can, him can do in your lives. He will perfect all that concerns you in the name of Jesus. We love you and thank you for uh, worshiping with us. Amen. So um, our weekly activities uh, on Tuesdays, digging deep on Tuesdays between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. And on Thursdays, within the same hour, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., we have our prayer and revival hour. We gather together to pray um, for one another and for the church. So please let us make sure we make ourselves available. If we do not work during this time, please let's make our way to the church. Amen. We are also reminded of our commitment to the church building project, and we are encouraged to continue doing so. We know that God loves a cheerful giver. We are almost there, and we'll get there in Jesus' name. The POS terminal, for the past two, three Sundays now, there's always uh, ODOP, like they say in Nigeria. There's always traffic jam over there, people using POS. So uh, our advice is that, after Sunday school, just find time. You can slip to the back, dream, praise, worship, you know, just quickly go in there so that there's no delay, you know, uh, during offering time when everybody goes there to, um, to use the POS machine. Praise God. And as we use the POS machine, let's continue to put the merchant copy in the envelope and address the envelope accordingly. God bless us as we obey in Jesus' name. So this is the last call now, our last call, last roll. We, the church still has tax receipts that, are, that have not yet been collected. So if you paid offering last year um, and you've never received your tax receipt from church, please see Brother Brendan after service to get your receipt. You need this to file your return. You do yourself a disservice if you don't get this tax receipt and file your return. So.
praise God. It makes it makes a difference. And uh, if you um, if you notice that you visit your pastor seat and there is an error on there, please also see Brad Brandon for correction. Amen. So, like Pastor announced last week, that um, we we are preparing to we have our church now. We are preparing for renovation, and we are planning towards uh, the final move to the to the new church building. And Pastor announced that the church is in need of some items. He said that last week, and so these are the items: um, mixer, professional drums drum set. Speakers, including monitors, loudspeakers, subwoofers. We need six microphones, two computers, and they are going to be all in one desktop. We also need a stage box, two projectors and screen, and 300 church chairs. Because we are going in style. We are not going with these chairs, right? We are going with uh, new chairs. So we need 300 church chairs. So this is how we work. If this, uh, this list will be posted on the notice board, they're already there, over there, and on there as well. So you don't have to memorize them. You can, on your way out, just look at the board. If God leads you, touches you, and say, this one, your name is your name is on this one, that makes that it is your family. If God says that you should, you know, buy that for the church, what we'd like you to do is this. It is pre preferable that you bring the money for whatever items you, any of these items, you want to provide for the church. It is preferable that you bring the money, and that will ensure uniformity. And also, um, you will get tax receipts for that contribution. Because for now, as a church, we can only give tax receipts for monetary contribution. But if uh, if you want to buy the items yourself, you can do that. But please make sure you speak to pastor directly. See pastor first. Talk to him about it before you, you can buy it so that he'll give you the exact specification of what is needed. But also note that we do not give tax receipts for items, so you won't get a tax receipt for that. But if you give, get the money across to pastor to buy these things, the church will provide you a tax receipt for it. Praise God. Is that clear? All right. Uh, we are also reminded of our prayer box at the back of the church. If you have a special prayer request or any prayer request, please uh, put them in the box. The Salvation Army, they meet on a regular basis to pray on them. And as they do so, testimonies will abound in Jesus' name. All our services are recorded on Facebook and YouTube. And you can search, you just search Grace Sanctuary Paris Saskatoon and you find all the videos on there. You can use this as, as an avenue to share the gospel with our friends, followers on social media. Praise God. And if there are any further announcements, they will be communicated to us before the end of the church service or via uh, our church WhatsApp page. And we are reminded that the WhatsApp page is strictly for the dissemination of information pertaining to the church only. And if you are not yet connected, please see uh, someone in the pastors, um, one of the ministers, uh, to get connected. Praise God. Offering time. Offering time. Please quickly, let's package our offering, tithes and vows. And please, if you use the POS, remember to address it properly, write your name, the amount you are giving and what you are giving for. Please, can we be upon our feet, please? Raise your offering up and say a word of prayer for yourself today. Send your offering on an errand. We are in a time that we are... It's a time for us to demonstrate our evidence as children of God. Send your offering in an errand, whatever you want. Is it monetary? Is it spiritual? What do you want? Do you want an evidence of a child of God? Pray that as you give unto God today freely, that God will refill you. That God will give you that which you are looking for from Him. Our God is able. He will never lie. He has never lied. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, even more than we can think of or imagine. You have to believe and have to say it with your mouth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Joshua, please. Um,
only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can say what no man can say, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can say, Jehovah. No man can do Jehovah. Oh, you can do what no man can do Jehovah. You are God. You are not your people. You are not just my job. You are a great God. You are God. You are God. You are God. You are not just people. You are not just my job. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Thank you, God, for today. We believe that you have moved powerfully in our midst today. Thank you because we await your testimony. Thank you because today you have given us that which you have promised us. Thank you because we shall go out today with confidence and our faith increase. Thank you because we know that you have loaded our weeks with so many, so many goodies. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we have given to you today from the abundance you've given to us. Accept our worship, accept our offering in the mighty name of Jesus. May this offering be used to further your work here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We apologize for the extra time we spend in church today. Uh, in fact, we spend extra over extra 45 minutes. Praise the Lord. As we close the service, I just want to tell you that the Almighty God will continue to shield and protect you in the mighty name of Jesus. So there is nothing to fear about because the Almighty God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Always tell yourself at all times that I shall not fear because my God shall protect me. I shall not fear because my God shall protect me. Amen. Uh, before we share the grace, let me just... Uh, say something briefly about the list that our sister announced about the uh, items that we still need in the church. Actually, some are already taken care of. Amen. Some of those items are taken care of. And, you know, um, to, uh, before we make it known to the church, it's been known to the uh, ministers before, and uh, some are already taken care of by the, by the special grace of God. Amen. And uh, the one we said that uh, if, if you want to take care of any of those items, there are specifications that, you know, we, we want. So we don't just want you to go and buy anything without letting us know. We we'll tell you the specification of what we want, and you can go and buy it. But if you want, if you buy it and you bring it, like my sister announced, we you cannot get tax receipt for gift in kind. It's our, you know, we, it, we have already determined in this church that we are not going to give tax receipt for gift in kind. It gives us less stress, less trouble with CRA. We don't want any trouble with CRA. So any gift we are going to give tax receipt must be a monetary uh, uh, gift. So therefore, if you want to... Uh, take care of any of those items, you know, and you want to, you want tax receipt for it, it means what will happen is that we tell you the exact price, you bring the money, we pay the money to church account, and we use church account to buy the item. Praise the Lord. So in such a case, the money enters into church account, then you can get tax receipt. 
So we are not giving the money to the pastor by the grace of God. Amen. So all of us, we are, uh, we are children of God, so we understand that any money we give does not go to pastor. The money goes to the work of God. Amen. If you have any question, feel free to ask. And then for the men and women group, uh, information has been passed through your leaders to you. You know, there is a demand from the men and the women group of the church. I'm saying it loud and clear now. That demand must be met before the end of April. Amen. The Almighty God will help you in Jesus' name. Once again, the Almighty God will protect you. He will shield you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the service of today. We adore you because you have been our protector. And we know that you continue to protect us. That is why, Father, as we are going this week, let your power rest upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your power will shield us from every manner of pandemic, coronavirus, or whatever name it might call itself, in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that speaks better things will be in our system. And because of the presence of blood in our system, our blood will be toxic to any manner of coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray whenever we are hearing from one another, it shall be good news. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, Father, because I pray answering God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dearly be after the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, choir. We are not going to sing any family song. And uh, there is this information I need to pass across. Please, I beg you in the name of God. When you want to listen to news, 